If you are experiencing foundation issues, get a free estimate from Ox Foundations. 76 degrees in downtown Sylacauga. Kelly Johnson, uh, Sylacauga Police Chief, joins us this morning. Chief, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Jimmy. Day. Good to have you with us today. And man, what a busy week it was last week and all this kind of stuff going on. A lot of rumors flying everywhere. Kind of walk us through last week. We had several, uh, initially several uh, uh, peaceful protests that were slated here in Sylacauga. One went uh, well on Friday. The other one did not come to fruition, I don't think. Yeah, we we had a Facebook post placed on, on Facebook Thursday that uh, said that they wanted to do a, a peaceful protest, and uh, no one had contacted us. So uh, they wanted to they wanted to protest at uh, at City Hall, and but nobody nobody sh- or at not City Hall, but at the uh, the park next to the county building, mm-hmm. uh, Central Park. Nobody had contacted us about the, the assembly, and uh, they kept saying they want it to be peaceful, they want it to be lawful, but you know, to make a lawful assembly, you had to get a permit through the mayor's office. And uh, the not knowing was kind of the, the problem that we had, was the not knowing who or, or what was setting it up and what we would be expecting. And uh, so we, I, I hope people didn't think we went overboard, but you know, we called in all of our officers. We had help from the, the county. We had help from the drug task force. We had help from Childersburg. So we had a lot of officer presence on Thursday, and nothing really happened. I think we wound up with three uh, juveniles out waving signs and just walking town. Mm-hmm. That was Thursday. Now, with all of the violence and, and rioting and 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 uh, there's been a, a lot of peaceful protests as well, and we, we don't want to uh, undermine that at all. But even in a community like ours, you got to be prepared for whatever. Yes, sir. And, and that's why I said, that, you know, the not knowing what was going to happen or, or who was going to be there was the problem that we had. We didn't have the officers out there for to to try to keep a protest from happening. We just didn't want to get it out for it to get out of hand, like it has in a lot of other cities and. I know the the business community was uh, worried about what was going to happen and and what might happen, and so we wanted to put them at ease as well. Uh, the The police presence wasn't just for the business owners. It was if anything had happened, you know, we wanted to keep the marchers or the uh, the protesters safe as well. Uh, Friday is another situation. It's two different ones, there, right? It's, it's two different ones. Yeah. We had a we had the the Friday peaceful protest was uh, actually called in by Miss Kendra Bradford. Uh, she's the one that she she and her group set up the march in Talladega as well and, and other cities. Uh, they came to Sylacauga and and it was very peaceful. Yeah. Uh, the the people and, and and my people had you know we had a good time. Well organized. It was very well organized. We had absolutely no problems through the whole thing. Uh, started at City Hall at the flagpole. We had a couple speakers there. And then uh, the police department escorted a group of about 100, maybe 150 people from City Hall down to Noble Park, where they also spoke and uh, said a prayer and, and just uh, kind of had a good time that I, I know as we were finishing up, there was groups singing in the park, and mm-hmm. so uh, the protesters or, or the the marchers stayed for about an hour or so after, and it was over with, with absolutely well, no hicks. Two hundred fifty, three hundred people probably there. It, it was a big crowd. Yeah. Yes, sir. And uh, it, it's good to see uh, across the board, young, not so young, black, white, didn't matter. They were walk, marching in unison together right. for for a, a goal of. Hey, let's talk about this thing. You know, that's that's what our First Amendment is for. Uh, that is the freedom of speech. That's the freedom of assembly. Mm-hmm. That is that's what it's for, and, and that's what it's meant to do, uh, is to let them have a voice. Everybody come in unity and and speak and and uh, you know protest what they feel is a is a problem in America. Social media was running wild last week, talking about. Uh, different groups coming in and causing problems and and and, and your your point to me was last week hey we don't need no help 
we can handle this. That's right. Yeah, we we got word that uh, anywhere from just the locals were banding together uh, to to and when I say locals, some from here, but others from not mm -hmm. not from yeah. here, and uh, coming in to protect the businesses downtown and, and show in a show of uh, I'd say force. And then we got word that uh, Antifa was in yeah. town. You know, it, it was it was the hotels were full of Antifa and and out of town protesters. And you know, none of that was true. It's just the Facebook and and social media is a big problem that that we have to overcome. And uh, I, I hope that we made both the people that were involved in the march and uh, our business community and the citizens of Silicon feel safe. And there was even on Facebook uh, another rally that was supposed to have taken place Saturday. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We uh, it, Another um, rally was supposed to have taken place Saturday starting at the Board of Education and going down to the high school. Uh, myself and Captain Muse came out with the, the shift that was on duty that day and, you know, they didn't have any, no one showed right. up. So right. we don't know if it was a just a, a post that somebody wanted to to try to get out there to shake us up but, or shake up the community, but it didn't happen. Yeah. Now, as far as our local police department, I mean, you're not naive to what all has been going on in our country. You know exactly what's happening. And, and you have to tweak a little bit as a police department. Yes, sir. We, uh, we, we've we gone back to a, a more of a security role we never we never came out of our security role due to the COVID mm -hmm. uh, before all this stuff started, so we never really came out. Now we have started picking up a little more of a proactive approach, but uh, with with the marches and with the the violent riots and uh, the violent protests, we have we've started doing a little bit more of a security role and watching our stuff, and uh, we pay more attention to the Facebook posts now, just to just to kind of make our business community and our citizens yeah. feel more safe. Yeah. You, you, you see what all is going on in our country, and you'll see uh, uh, deaths and, and, and violence and damage and looting and that kind of stuff among the peaceful protesters that are there as well. And any time you have a shooting, whether it's in a small town or a large town, automatically a lot of people tie a local shooting with what's been going on. We had a shooting here in Silicon over the weekend. We did. We did. We had a uh, one of our residents here was shot multiple times over in the Drew Court community. Uh, he was taken to UAB and he checked himself out of UAB a few hours later. So uh, not very serious. We don't know, you know, we don't have any uh, suspects at this time. I think he actually got out before our investigators could get up and talk to him to see what was going on. So our plans are to talk to him this week, and uh, we don't believe it was a random act, just from what we see and what we heard, but uh, we hope to talk to him to see if we can solve it and figure out what went on. So we don't think it tied with anything else, am I No, no, okay. no, sir. We don't, we don't think it tied with anything else. Uh, normally, it's, you know, it's a beef that that person has yeah. with somebody yeah. else, and, uh, but we don't know right now. We don't think it tied with anything else as far as the, any protests or any of that. Before we go, Silicaga Police Chief Kelly Johnson with us for another minute or two. Speak to uh, the viewers here this morning in, in, in the local area. A lot of apprehension, a lot of, lot of nervousness, even today. Uh, speak to them about how the Silicaga Police Department is there to help them. Yes, sir. We, uh, we're here to help everybody. I mean, we, we don't want people to be afraid of us. We're human just like everybody else. Uh, our profession is a touch different than uh, your plumbers and your electricians because we can actually take freedoms away uh, and we we want people to be comfortable with us. Uh, it's it's our duty to to make sure that our interaction with the public is safe for the officer and the person and uh, we want it to be fair. We, uh, of course, if, if an officer is stopping someone for speeding, that's the most common interaction that they have with law enforcement. You know, it, it's not just because we want to catch a speeder. It's because usually we've had complaints mm -hmm. of people speeding, uh, traffic accidents in areas, whatever. And, and it's all about safety. We want to make sure that the people of Silicon are safe, whether it be from traffic incidences, crashes, or homicides and, and robberies. You know, we, we want to go, we go from one extreme to the other 
And uh, we just want the people of our community to be safe and feel safe in our city. There's even been talk, uh, in, in, especially uh, northern cities, major cities, Minneapolis, uh, uh, New York, of, of actually defunding the police departments and, and uh, dissolving the police departments. I, I don't see, just as a citizen, how that could be advantageous. Yeah. Uh, on my way to work this morning, I heard that Minneapolis had, had actually uh, disbanded their police department. And I uh, don't know if they're putting the cart before the horse because they also said that they were looking into a community, uh, somewhat community-based policing program that would take over as the law enforcement in that city. And, you know, you would hope as a, as a member of Minneapolis population that, that they would already have that figured out before they disbanded the police department. But... Yeah, it, it's talked about, and uh, I don't know how that would work. You know, there there are still more good police officers than there are bad. You know, one bad apple doesn't spoil, spoil the bunch. But uh, the the fact that they're talking about defunding and and actually disbanding their police departments is kind of asinine. Yeah, you you mentioned, uh, and this is a final point here. Uh, you mentioned uh, more good policemen than bad policemen. Uh, certainly they are. But as as a good police officer, when you see something like that happen, that happened in Minneapolis uh, that caused a death, do you look at yourself as a police officer? What can I do better? Sure. We all, we, we do that. Uh, it brings light to our profession and, mm -hmm. and uh, we all want to step back and take a look at, at how we act and how we react. And we don't want to overreact, but you know, we want to go home at night hmm. or at the end of our shift, and uh, we hope that our interaction with our people or, or the people that are coming through our town is is a safe interaction and a, and a fair interaction. All right. So, like, I'm Police Chief Kelly Johnson. Our guest this morning, Chief, always a pleasure, sir. Thanks, sir. More daybreak right after this.